Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of the incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you will purchase, you purchase men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Say thank you for the blood. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Verse 5. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb. I want to talk with this thought in mind today, the lion and the lamb. The lion and the lamb. We thank God for what he has done. When we thank him for all of his blessings, count your many blessings, name them one by one, count your many blessings, see what God has done. We can never thank him enough. He's blessing you right now. Tell your neighbor, he's blessing me right now. We thank him for what he does, but we worship him for who he is. And so there may be a time when you don't think you have something for which to worship God, but there to thank God, but there will never be a time when you have that you can't worship God. 
even in your sickness, even in your lowest moments, even in your depression, even in your hard times, your suffering and your hurt, you might not thank him, but you can still worship him. We thank him for what he's done, but we worship him for who he is. And he's the same yesterday and today and forever. He's still God. Every day you work up, you have a reason to worship God. Here in our text, we see that the four living creatures and the 24 angels and innumerable elders and innumerable angels begin to worship God. They sing a new song and uh, they begin to worship him because it is revealed who he is. He who sits upon the throne is God the Father and in his right hand there is a scroll with writing on the front and the back which means the writing was complete. There was no more room to add anything else. John the Revelator, as he sees this vision, begins to cry because one of the elders says, Who is worthy to open the seals and read this scroll? Nobody says a word. John begins to cry. For this scroll is God's title deed. It is God's will. And if no one can read the scroll, then we will not be redeemed. We will not be saved. There would be no eternal future for us. For when the scroll is open, then the plan of God for all of his children at the end of time is revealed. If no one can open it to be recipient from the will, you have to be a legitimate heir. Amen. Amen. The will is only written for those who are legitimate heirs. Nobody can open the scroll. And therefore, the legitimate heirs, who, who is worthy to open the scroll? Who got the nerve to go up to the throne and take that scroll out of the Father's hands? God's redemption plan could not be completed until the scroll was opened and our future was revealed. Well, I want to tell you three things real quick that we see in our passage. Amen. And then we're going to give God our tithes and offerings. Then we're going to go on over to Harlem and eat up their food. <laughs> then we're coming back to Queens. Somebody say amen, amen. for eating up the food. <laughs> Number one, first of all, we see the lion of the tribe of Judah. Elder tells John, don't cry. There is one here. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He can open this scroll. He is worthy to open the scroll for he has triumphed. Now, this language of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, we will not understand it unless you go over to the 49th chapter of the book of Genesis. As Jacob is giving blessings to his 12 sons, he is predicting their future. But he says to Judah, Judah, you will be the ruler of my people, and your brothers and their tribes will bow down to you. Judah was the kingly tribe. All of the kings of Israel came from the tribes of Judah. Except for the first king, King Saul. He was not from the tribe of Judah. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. And for his disobedience, God rejected him. And chose a little ruddy boy named David from the tribe of Judah to sit upon the throne of Israel. The lion of the tribe of Judah. It was the totem of the tribe as it were. In ancient cultures, tribes and clans had totems. Because the totem, the spirit of the totem was said to represent the people. And so when they would go out into battle, 
they would go out with their totem leading them in the fight. If the totem could have been a bear because of its power, or it could have been an eagle because of its grace and its power as it soared through the air. But for the tribe of Judah, the totem was a lion. And that was the greatest totem of all. Because the lion represents dignity. It represented regality. Even now when we watch the Nature Channel or the Discovery Channel and we see shows about a man, lions and a pride of lions, we see how they walk and they strut with such dignity and with such regality. How they are feared by all of the other animals in the jungle. This lion represents sovereignty. He is the king of the beasts. He is sovereign. He is in control. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the lion. He is courageous. He is not afraid. He is mighty and he is fierce in battle. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. <coughs> the greatest of them all is the lion. And so one of the titles of our Lord is that he is your lion. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. But secondly, we are told that he is the root of David. What that teaches us is that this lion, who is the lion of the tribe of Judah, is eternal. He is the root of David. In other words, before there was David, there was the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. Yeah. He came from David in his earthly existence. But in his eternal existence, he was before David. He was the root of David. David didn't give him his kingship. The Lion of Judah gave David his kingship. You see, you've got to understand who this Lion of the tribe of Judah is. His mother was Mary, but his father was God. As Mary's boy, he was a descendant of David. But on his father's side, he was David's antecedent. He existed before David. I heard him say before Abraham was. I am. Before David was. I am. On his mother's side, he was born in Bethlehem. But on his father's side, he has no beginning. He always was all by himself. On his mother's side, he was crucified at a place called Calvary. But on his father's side, he has no beginning and he has no ending. On his mother's side, he was born in 3 B.C. But on his father's side, he is the ancient of days. Before there was light or darkness, he existed. He stepped out on nothing and he called all the worlds into being. On his mother's side, he was David's son. But on his father's side, he was David's Lord. He's fierce. He's feared. He's powerful. 
He's rapacious in battle. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the root of David. And by the way, he is also the Lamb of God. When John turned around, he didn't see a great lion that struck fear in him. He saw a lamb. Because the lion is the lamb. And the lamb is the lion. Lamb of God. John mentions him 28 times in this book of Revelation. He mentions him twice in his gospel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the Greek word here that is used for lamb is not a full grown lamb. Lord have mercy. Huh? Do you like veal? Huh? How many people like veal? It's all right. It's all right. I mean, your pastor likes pig feet, so it's all right if you like veal. You, do you like veal? What is veal? Huh? A baby what? A baby cow. And why do people like veal? Oh, somebody ain't praying for me in this house today. Because it's so tender. Over there in Harlem today? Oh, well, y'all making me hungry up in the house. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. The Greek word that is used here is not a full blown lamb, it's a little pet lamb. You remember the nursery rhyme, Mary had what? A little lamb, a little precious, tiny, delicate. That, that sweet little lamb, that's who, that's who is depicted here. This lamb, this lamb, this little lamb, this precious lamb. Mary had a little lamb and Jesus was his name. John tells us that we have been cleansed by the blood of the lamb. He tells us that the church is the bride of the lamb. Remember when Abraham went up on the mountain to take his son's life, to take Isaac's life because God wanted to know who do you love the most, Abraham? Do you love the blessings or do you love the blessor? Do you love the created things or do you love the creator? And just as he was about to raise his knife, little Jacob asked the question, Daddy, we got the fire and we got the wood, but where is the lamb? Well, John the Baptist took that question uh, 2,000 years old and he turned that question into an exclamation point. That day he saw Jesus walking on the other side of the lake and he told his disciples, look at that on the other side. That's him right there. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We are told he has seven horns and seven eyes and seven spirits. Lord have mercy. Seven is the number of perfection and completeness. Uh, the horns represent his power. The eyes represent his wisdom. And the spirit represents his presence. Uh, in other words, he is omnipotent. Uh, he is omniscient. Uh, and he is omnipresent. Uh, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you that he's both lion and lamb. Whatever you need, that's who he is. He's your lamb when you need him and he's your lion when you need him. He's the lamb meek and lowly, but he's the lion who is awesome and fierce. He's the lamb that came in weakness, but he's the lion who's coming back in power. He's the lamb who comforts us and rocks us and tells us everything is going to be alright, but as the lamb, he is my defender. Lord have mercy. He keeps the devil and all the evil folk off of my trail. As the lamb, Lord have mercy. He's a friend who sticks closer than any brother. In the midnight hour, I can call on my lamb because he understands me. But as my lion, Lord have mercy. He fights my battle. He makes my enemies my footstool. He stands beside me. He protects me. You need the lamb and you need the lion. As the lamb, he's your victory over sin. But as the lion, he's your victory over the enemy. I don't care what the enemy is. The lion of the tribe of Judah, he is the lamb of God. And he's standing by your side. 
He will fight your battles in the courtroom. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. In the doctor's room, there is no sickness he cannot handle. He is your lion. When they talk about you and call you everything but a child of God, you don't have to speak a word. You don't have to lift a finger. Just call on your lion. Just his roar will make your enemy sit down and be afraid. As the lamb, he's full of mercy and he's full of grace. Sometimes we need mercy and sometimes we need grace. Let me correct myself. All the time we need mercy and all the time we need grace. But as the lion, Lord have mercy, he's full of justice. You don't have to worry about the folk that do you wrong. The lion of the tribe of Judah is on your side. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. They shall soon be cut down and wither away. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. As a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Don't worry about the justice of your cause. He will bring both justice and he brings grace and mercy. I just want to thank him because he's the lion and the lamb. He's everything I need. He's water when I'm thirsty. He's bread when I'm hungry. He's money when I'm broke. He's health when I'm sick. Yes, he's peace when I'm worried. He's everything I need. He's my bridge over troubled water. He's my shelter in the time of storm. He's my strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. He's my everything. He's the air that I breathe. Yes, yes, yes. He's the walk that I walk. The talk that I talk. When I woke up this morning, I said, yes, Lord. Lion and lion. Go with me today. Stand by me today. Yes. In your way. Yes. Lion. And lion. again. He's coming in power. He came by himself the first time. But when he comes again, he'll be the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he'll be flanked by the armies of heaven. Oh, bless his name. That's why I love him today. He's my lion. He's my lamb. He's my friend. Yes. In your Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah, yes. They think he's weak. He's not just man. He's lion. And man.
Who is the lion? He is the lion. 